Hello beautiful friends, my name is Brittany. Welcome back or welcome to Rescues and Reads. Today I'm going to be answering all of the questions that you left me on my 1k Q&A celebration announcement video. So about three weeks ago, I made this very quick little video about reaching the milestone of 1000, thanking you all for making that happen and that how in celebration of y'all, I was going to be doing a 1K Q&A plus a giveaway. And in order for you to be eligible to be entered into that giveaway, you just had to leave me a question. And so today I'm going to be answering those questions. And then after this video is done, I will be announcing the winner of the giveaway by doing a random comment picker from that video. Now, since I'm filming on my phone and I'm using a tablet that is so old, it doesn't actually have a screen recording feature. I know I looked into it. I tried. I couldn't figure it out. I'm just going to have to kind of do it, announce the winner here in the video. I'll try to post a picture of who wins right here. And then I will reply to the comment of the person who wins on that original video and then ask them to get into contact with me. And then again, the prize was a $25 online gift certificate to the bookish store of your choice. The only caveat, of course, is that the gift card has to be electronic. Like I have to be able to send it to you electronically. I did receive a handful of questions on that video, not too many. So this shouldn't be terribly long, but I wanted to go ahead and get this up so it wasn't just languishing out there for an indefinite amount of time. I have kind of skimmed the questions that were asked, but I haven't really looked too far into them and I definitely don't have any answers planned. So I apologize in advance if this kind of gets a little bit rambly and off topic because that's just how I roll. But I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of start in the order that they were received and we'll get through them. All right, so Susan D has two questions. She says, what is your favorite and least favorite format for reading and why? And what are my bucket list US states that I want to visit? So my favorite format for reading 100% is audiobooks. I don't think that's going to come as a surprise to anybody because I mentioned it multiple times that without audiobooks I probably wouldn't be reading at all. I don't know if I have some kind of focus deficiency like if I have ADD or ADHD or anything like that. I just know that my ability to concentrate for long periods of time is completely shot and that's not just with reading that's within all other areas of my life. So like even at work if I'm sitting I can't concentrate on one task for an extended period of time. I have to break it up with other things or I have to walk away and take a break before I come back to it. And so depending on what the work is, I'll like split it up over multiple days or multiple periods. Same with schoolwork. When I'm in school, if there's a bigger project coming up, I have to split that into multiple days, especially if there is a lot of reading involved because I'm not going to be able to just sit and focus for a long period of time and get it done. And so when it comes to reading, my brain, for lack of a better term, is never calm enough to sit down and read. Even if there's like nothing going on and I'm really caught up with everything else in life, my brain is never like, okay, well, we can just sit down and focus on a book now. That never happens. And usually if I'm trying to sit down to read, I'm always thinking about everything else that's going on, what's next on my to-do list and things like that. So these days, the only time I sit down and read physically is when I have really chunky fantasies that need a lot of time and attention so that I can highlight, that I can annotate and refer back to maps and contextual information and things like that. And that only happens a couple of times a year. I'm not even doing it all that frequently. The vast majority of what I read these days is via audiobooks. Audiobooks save my life because I can listen when I'm doing basically anything that is even remotely mindless or or things that I can do on autopilot, like when I'm driving to work, when I'm getting ready in the morning, when I'm doing chores around the house, I can listen to them on audio. And since I listen to audiobooks on two times speed, I definitely get through them fairly quickly. The only time I listen to them faster than two times speed is when the narrator is very, very slow. And so when listening to them on two times speed actually kind of feels like I'm listening to them on one time speed. So for the most part, audiobooks is how I consume almost everything that I read. I wouldn't necessarily say that I have a least favorite format. If I had to choose one, it would definitely be an ebook just because I have very little opportunity to actually read an ebook. If I have a physical book, I'm probably almost always going to be reading that over an ebook, but I understand the convenience factor. In fact, like if I am reading something physically and I know that I want to take it to my work so that during downtimes or on my lunch break, I actually have an opportunity to read. I would like to have the ebook version so that I don't have to lug the book to and from work. But if I did have to choose one, it would probably be ebook. In terms of US bucket list states, I don't have many anymore. I have seen almost the entire Western half of the United States. I was born and raised in California and then I lived in Oregon and Washington for three and a half years. So I'm very familiar with those states. And then naturally in my time living in those states, I managed to get around the whole Western half of the United States. So the Western half I feel is really covered. So my focus has really always been on the East Coast. For the longest time, the main thing on my bucket list was to see a lot of the East Coast states, primarily Washington DC, Massachusetts, Virginia, New York, and things like that. And I was able to satisfy that last year when we drove from our state in Mississippi 
up through the Carolinas to Washington DC. We spent some time in Alexandria and Arlington, Virginia as well before moving on into New York, New York, the Manhattan area, and then through up into Boston. It was a fantastic time. I loved it. It was a very rushed time though, so I would absolutely love to go back and spend some more time in those areas. Also during that trip, we were driving through some of the states that I would like to spend more time in, like Connecticut and Rhode Island. I certainly want to see Maine. Maine is probably one of my top bucket list because I just love the vibe of Maine. I want to see the sunrise from Acadia National Park and go to the lighthouses and things like that. I would also say I very much want to spend a lot more time in the Carolinas. We drove through them while on that road trip, but I've always had like an obsession with the Carolinas and I can't tell you why. There has always been something about them that has pulled me to them. And now that I've lived in the South for the past six years, I'm even more drawn to them as Southern states. Oh, and then of course, Alaska. I would like to take an Alaskan cruise because that's probably the only way I'm ever going to get to Alaska. So Alaska is definitely up there, but that's like one that's really more complicated to get to, but that's definitely on there as well. All right, Janine Thompson asks, I would love a pet introduction. I love my pets and I would love to meet yours. My question is what pet rescue organizations do you support and why? Okay, so I will try to go ahead and get some actual footage of my pets and insert them here after I answer your question so that you can actually meet them and see them. But just as a brief general introduction, the first pet that we have is Oliver. He is a white Siberian Husky. He is going to be about eight years old this year and he is a kind of rescue. And the reason why I say kind of is because he was born into a family that had a male and female Husky that they were not breeding intentionally. It just accidentally happened. And so they had a male and female pup out of that litter and they gave Oliver to a couple friend of theirs and they were not treating Oliver very well. Like they were just leaving him in his crate like almost the entirety of the day and they were going through relationship problems and they were very much neglecting him. When we got him, he was was actually very like he was really skinny on the underweight side and he had been returned back to the family that had originally had him so he wasn't in a shelter or anything like that but he was definitely taken out of a bad situation and given back to the original breeding family and he was being like given away for free like nobody was trying to make any money off of him even though he was an AKC registered Siberian Husky that he was literally coming from a family that just wanted him to go to a good home because they accidentally had puppies my husband has always wanted a Husky and you know as a huge advocate advocate for rescues obviously I didn't really want to like I didn't want to go to a breeder or anything for like that so we ended up managing stumbling upon this situation and getting Oliver at that time. Next we have our baby Domino she's going to be seven this year. We rescued her from the local Humane Society in 2018 when she was just shy of two years old. Something that's really remarkable about Domino is when we met her almost the entirety of her back had no hair on it. They couldn't tell us why it had no hair they just said that she came in as a stray with this condition and they didn't think that it was ever going to grow back. They thought that it was a result of some kind of condition that she no longer had, but they thought that it was permanent. But we decided to go ahead and take her home. And within a couple of weeks of her being with us and getting proper care and nutrition and stuff like that, not only did the hair grow back on her back, but she turned her coat from this brown color into this really shiny black that she was supposed to be. So she ended up getting really healthy and, you know, now she's a chunky girl. We love her so much and she has been the best for Oliver, who has definitely some anxiety issues from his former situations. Yes, separation anxiety and dominance helps him with that. That's one of the reasons why we wanted to get a second dog in the first place was to help him. So they are the best of friends. They love each other and we're very happy with that. We also have two cats. We have Nola who is our pure black domestic short hair. We got her in 2020 in the middle of the pandemic right after we had to say goodbye to the cat that we had. Her name was Kiva and we had to unfortunately put her down in May of 2020 because she had mouth cancer. And a few weeks later we decided that we were ready to go ahead and get another one. We went to the Humane Society and and they had a litter of all black kittens. And I went back there and I was seeing them and I was touching them, I was playing with them. And I really didn't care which one, but there was this one that was climbing up the walls. Like she was literally all over the bars, just like crazy. And I came back and I told my husband, you go back there and you pick one because I can't pick. And of course he comes back with the wild one. She was called Mango at the time. They were named after fruit. Like there was honeydew, there was watermelon and we got Mango and she was the craziest one. Her name is Nola Bean. She's, um, she's our princess, Nola Bean. She's definitely a sassy cranky black cat exactly what you would expect black cats are my favorite. I just love her so much. And then also from that same Humane Society, we rescued our newest addition, Archibald. He is a short-haired orange tabby. He was less than six weeks old when we got him. He was just an itty bitty tiny little baby. We rescued him in December of 2021. And so he is just oh, about a year and a half old at this point. All right. So I caught three of them on the bed. So I figured this would be the perfect time to go ahead and do an introduction video here. This baby is Domino. She is our little pity. She's so pitiful. Oh my gosh, look at that face. And then 
This is Miss Nola Bean, who is perpetually cranky. And then we have um, Oliver over here. Don't mind my husband's CPAP machine. Oliver. Oh, look at those eyes. Oh my gosh, look at those eyes. <gasps> look at how beautiful you are. Oh my goodness. So these are three of my fours. Domino and Nola came from the same rescue shelter and um, Oliver came from a private owner. And I'll talk to you a little bit more about how each one of them came to be in our household. Um, and now we just have to go suss out Archibald. And this is Archibald. He is a handsome boy. He's also in his chaos stage right now. He's either snuggles or chaos. There is no in between. And right now he wants to play. Can I have my... Why are you so handsome? Why are you so handsome? <laughs> I'm going, get, 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 get. Let me go. We have a very full fur baby family and we love them to death. And then in terms of pet rescue organizations, so the only one that I personally support myself is the one that where we rescued our fur babies. It's the Humane Society of South Mississippi and they do amazing, incredible work. They are basically the only humane society on the Gulf Coast of Mississippi. And so they are constantly overloaded. Unfortunately, we do not have great animal legislation here in Mississippi. That's not really a concern, unfortunately, in this very slow to progress state. So they are constantly flooded and I try to do what I can to help them. I cannot donate a lot to them, unfortunately, but I do rinse and collect all of the cans that I use every single can that I use I put in bags and every couple of months I take them to the Humane Society because they turn them in for money they also accept like blankets and shredded paper which they use for litter and they do have a thrift store so anytime I have donations to make I take them to there so that they can put them in the thrift store and sell them for money so HSSM is really the only organization that I personally like support with my own time attention and money and eventually I would like to be able to spend time time there like volunteer I just don't have the bandwidth to do that right now of course I do also love and respect a lot of the larger organizations like ASPCA Humane Society International and also of course the organizations that spend a lot of time working on wildlife conservation like WWF Oceana Panthera I also love organizations that are focused on conservation from an environmental standpoint like doing what they can to help save the environment to save wildlife habitats and things like that if you've never heard of four ocean they are a fantastic company that the more you support the more ocean plastic that they are able to remove and I just love them so much. There are so many amazing companies out there that are doing work like this and I would encourage every single one of you to get involved in some way if you possibly can. Jennifer Clark asked what's my favorite genre? So I would have to say that my favorite genre is all of those like very focused in the thriller suspense mystery category. That's what I've been reading since I was a teenager. That's what I've always loved to read even still today. It's my primary genre. It's primarily what's on my TBR. Those are the primary releases that I'm looking forward to all in the same type of genre but yet it wouldn't be the genre that I chose to read for the rest of my life if I could only choose one. I find that there's still a little bit too much similarity between each book in order for me to get the variety that I need in what I read for that to be the only genre that I ever read and also there's a distinct lack of emotional connection with these books because they're very much plot focused and not character focused. So even though I would say that's 100% my favorite genre it's what I look forward to reading the most it's probably not the genre that I would choose to read if I could only read one genre that would probably probably be fantasy if I could get to the point where I could read more fantasy consistently because fantasies can literally have everything. They could have a romance, they could have thrill, suspense, action, adventure, danger, all of that good stuff can be in a fantasy. And so because fantasies can run the gamut like that, I would definitely choose fantasy as a genre that I read continuously. But just in general, overall, thriller suspense is my favorite genre. That's probably the one that I know the most about, the one that I can provide the most recommendations for, I have the most experience with, and I can definitely talk to you intelligently about plot devices that are used, things to look out for, things to stay away from, and things like that. But I don't think I could read it exclusively for the rest of my life. And Mindy Meeks asks, I would like to know more about the rescues side of your channel and any other hobbies you have besides reading. Okay, so I'm going to give a little bit of context here as to why I changed my channel name. Because if you've been here for a while, you'll know that prior to September of 2022, when I came back from a really long booktube hiatus, my channel name was The Continuing Chronicles. 
in 2021, I actually started making a lot of big decisions when it came to lifestyle choices and then the direction that my life was taking because I fully made the decision that I was ready to dedicate my life fully to animal care and welfare because my dream has always been to work with animals in some capacity. I just never thought that I could. I thought my only two options for working with animals was to either be a veterinarian, which is never something that I wanted to do. I'm not a medical person whatsoever, whether it comes to human or animals. And I didn't want to be in a situation where the life or death of an animal was in my hands. Or I thought that I would have to be a wildlife biologist, which I cannot do because I'm definitely more of an English history brained type of person. I'm not a math and science brained person, which I find really interesting because overall I'm a very rational person. Like I'm not emotional person. I'm a very left brain person, not a very right brain person. I think most of the time. So I do love math and science for its rationality, but I personally can't do it. And so I never thought that I was going to be able to work with animals because I wasn't going to be able to successfully complete a science -y degree. But at some point in 2021, I had a very like big light bulb moment. I had already started doing a lot of research and making a lot of changes to my lifestyle based on sustainability and environmental friendliness. I had started to make like sustainable swaps in my home. I had actually started eliminating meat from my diet. And by the end of 2021, I was fully a vegan. Like I had started to do all of these things in the name of environmental health, which in turn would also affect animal care and welfare. And at some point in 2021, there was like a big light bulb moment for me where I decided that I was no longer going to be afraid of trying to pursue something that I always wanted to do because I thought that I couldn't do it. I wanted to go ahead and dedicate my life care and welfare of animals. I wanted to make that my career, my lifelong goal, my lifelong mission. And so that's just kind of what I started to do. I found an environmental college called Unity College based out of Maine, oddly enough, and they had a fully online program for animal health and behavior. And so I made the decision that I was going to go ahead and start their undergraduate program and just kind of start from scratch that way. But the intensity of that program, it's five weeks every class. So just taking one class at a time, I was considered a full-time student. And that was a lot. Like I just didn't have the bandwidth for it. And at that intensity, I didn't think it was worth it starting from scratch. So I've actually made the decision to go back and just go with their masters in animal science and behavior. And I plan to start that this year. I need to go ahead and just get it done, get it out of the way. And so circling back, when I made the decision to come back to book two, I wanted to create a channel that was more in line with where my life was going. Because even though this is always going to be a book related channel, like this is never going to be a channel dedicated to anything other than books. But I knew that as I took this journey, trying to create a career or maybe not even a career, like maybe not even a full-time career that I would be able to live off of, but as something that I did that was a huge part of my life, like animal rescue and fostering and things like that. I knew that as I started taking this journey, I wanted to document it in some form. That's why I ultimately made the decision to change the name of my channel. And I had already been featuring my own animals, my own rescues heavily, like in my vlogs. And so I thought that, you know, as I continue to do vlogs and things like that, where I'm taking this journey, that's how I was going to include it, incorporate it. It is going very slow, obviously, because there's only so much that I can do on this side at this moment, but I have to work towards it. I have to work and build it up. And eventually I hope to be able to document that more on my channel, especially as I'm going through the master's program and then potentially later, like some certifications and things like that. But in the meantime, I hope that you're okay just seeing my own rescues here within the family. Oh, also really quick, circling back to the question about rescue organizations. One of my favorite ones to follow on Instagram is Hannah Shaw. She is the kitten lady and she runs the Orphan Kitten Club, which is a nonprofit organization. It's all based out of San Diego, California, but their Orphan Kitten Club helps kittens all over the country, especially those with maybe special medical needs. Hannah Shaw is like my idol. She is my dream person. I wish that I could do what she does because her life is solely dedicated around the care and rescue of cats and kittens. And also she will also do other rescues like for pigs and farm animals and things like that. If you're not following her, do yourself a favor and follow her. She is the best resource with regard to cat and kitten rescue that I think is out there. And she is basically going to be my Bible when I'm able to get more into that. So I highly recommend following her if you haven't. I know that was a really, really long winded answer. I'm so, so sorry, guys. I just kind of wanted to give you context as to why I ultimately decided to change the name of my channel and kind of the direction that I see myself and my life taking in the future and how I plan to incorporate that into my channel. And then her other question was, what hobbies do I have? I don't really have any. For a long time, I was a big diamond painter. I still love diamond painting so much. I have so many in boxes in my closet that I'm just never going to start because I just don't have the time, especially if I'm doing booktube. All of my free time when I'm not working, when I'm not at the gym, when I'm not cleaning my house, when I'm not running errands, when I'm not doing something for my family, all of that free time goes into filming the content and editing the content. And then when I'm in school, like I don't even know if I'm going to be able to do two to three videos a week. It might go down to one to two. I don't know because then I'm also going to have to figure out how to fit the school
school back in. Booktube is definitely the biggest hobby that I have. Like I said, I did love diamond painting. I would love to get back into it someday, but that's basically it aside from Booktube and reading. That That's really the main hobby that I have at this time. Also, I collect Funko Pops. I don't know if you would necessarily consider that a hobby because it's not something like I'm actively doing. It's just I purchase a pop, I get a pop, I put it on my pop shelves. You know what I mean? And I definitely don't collect as actively as I used to. I used to be a diehard collector. Over the years, I've just determined that that's not sustainable. It's not sustainable for the environment and it's certainly not sustainable for my wallet. And so I've actually sold quite a few of my collection and I only collect very special pops here and there. But collecting Funko Pops has been a part of my life for a long time. So if you want to count that, you can count that. Cindy's Crazy Book Addiction asks, where was I born versus where am I now? And I kind of answered this earlier, but I was born and raised in Central California. And then in 2014, I moved up to Vancouver, Washington to attend school, which oddly enough didn't end up working out. And I had to be a completely online student because of my work schedule. But I did move up to Vancouver, Washington. I worked in Portland, Oregon for a while. Um, I ended up moving to Oregon for a brief time. And then ultimately I ended up here in South Mississippi because my now husband, then boyfriend at the time was in the Navy and this was his station. And this is just where we stayed because he got out of the military. So we have been in South Mississippi for almost six years now. We don't have plans to leave anytime soon. We're just kind of happy where we are and we'll see where it goes from there, but we don't really have any plans to move anytime soon. And then Magical ASMR asks, have you gotten any cool bookish themed gifts? If not, what's the coolest gift you've ever been given? Um, okay, so side note, if you love ASMR, you need to go check out Magical ASMR because she's fantastic. I just, just love everything about her channel. Her tapping, her gentle voice, it's all fantastic. Go check her out. Um, I don't think so. I don't think I've ever really gotten cool bookish themed gifts. I am not surrounded by a lot of readers or people who understand reading as a hobby really. And so I'm not really surrounded by people who would, would know what to get me as a bookish person. I know that my husband, a couple of years ago, he got me these really cool bookends that were the style of the Hogwarts Express, which were really cool. Oh, and he also got me this like sorting hat pen holder, which was also really cool as well as um, some like Harry Potter figurines. But like that's, that's basically it in terms of bookish gifts. I don't really get bookish gifts. In terms of the coolest gift that I've ever been given, holy cow, I'm off the spot. My gosh, this is going to sound so ridiculous. And this is just the first thing that I thought of. It's probably not the coolest gift that I've ever been given, but still to this day, like 20 plus years later, it still stands out as one of the most like meaningful gifts for me. I would say that this was probably in the late nineties. I had watched Titanic for the first time. And by the way, y'all, that movie is still my favorite movie of all time. And I am still absolutely obsessed with Titanic history and things like that. So that's why this gift meant a lot to me. But my parents got me this Titanic music box. It was a limited edition collector's music box and it played My Heart Will Go On. I still have it. It's just like tucked away safe and sound in a box somewhere. But I just remember like crying when I received it because I loved it so much and I still I still do. I love it tremendously. I would say that that's probably one of the coolest gifts that I've ever gotten just because it meant so much to me and you know I was only I think in, like in the sixth grade when I got that gift and it's still like one of the first things that I think about when I think about cool gifts that I've gotten and really that's all that I got at the moment. I'm terrible about coming up with things on the spot. I'm sure as soon as I'm done filming this video I'm gonna think of a million other cool gifts that I've gotten but yeah that still to this day stands out as one of my favorite gifts I've, I've ever received. Okay, Tara asks, what is your favorite book of all time and where would you live if you could live anywhere? Tara, you asked me, what's my favorite book of all time? That's, no, that's a dirty question. <laughs> Nobody can literally just pick their one favorite book of all time. Okay, so how about I choose like my top three to five books? How about, how about that as a compromise? So definitely The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Definitely like The Great Alone or The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna. Kristen Hanna is phenomenal. She's just one of my favorite authors of all time. She can do no wrong, but those are probably my two favorite books by her. I'm also going to say The Nevernight Chronicles by Jay Kristoff and even The Illuminate Files by Jay Kristoff. Like those entire series are phenomenal and some of the best things I've ever read. I would also probably have to say like Crescent City by Sarah J. Mass. Pretty much anything Sarah J. Mass creates is going to end up as one of my favorite things. And I also have to mention The Simple Wild by K.E. Tucker, which is my favorite romance of all time. That whole series is my favorite of all time. So those would probably be my tops if I had to give recommendations, which is cool because you have a little bit of everything. You know, you have some historical fiction in there. You have some fantasy. You have some romance. So take your pick. These are all my favorites. And where would I live if I could live anywhere? Gosh, I don't have an exciting answer to this question. Honestly, my answers would probably be very similar to my bucket list states answer. I would love to live in the Carolinas at some point or possibly in Maine. Although, although I know the weather in Maine can get pretty serious, pretty cold, and I don't know if I'm ready for that. But I definitely don't think I would ever want to live outside of the United States unless it was temporary 
temporarily. Um, I'm pretty much dying to go to and would sell my soul to go to the UK. I desperately want to go spend time in London, Scotland, Ireland, that whole area. I have never really been truly outside of the United States. Like I've taken a couple jaunts into Canada. I've been to some Caribbean islands, but I've never actually like been across the seas to Europe or Asia or anything like that. And I am dying to go. And so I wouldn't mind living there temporarily. And I think living there temporarily would also give me the opportunity to see a lot of other places that I would be a lot closer to geographically. So I could just hop on over to France, maybe go into Germany for some Oktoberfest, go to Italy, you know, go to all of these places that I might not otherwise get to see. So I think that's probably my answer. I would love to temporarily live in the UK. So that's probably my answer to that. Firecats asks, besides Buffy, what other shows do you love? So I would definitely say that the top favorites that come to mind are going to be Breaking Bad and Sons of Anarchy. Breaking Bad is just, just phenomenal overall, the storyline to that. And Sons of Anarchy is definitely, definitely one of my favorite shows of all time. It is a very violent show. It's a very gritty show. It's a very dark show. If you don't think that you can handle it, I wouldn't recommend. That show definitely holds a special place in my heart, especially because it's basically based around the hometown in California where I grew up in Stockton, California. If you watch that show, you will hear Stockton mentioned quite frequently. And the fictional town that Sons of Anarchy is set called Charming is basically set on the border of Stockton. So it is really definitely set around the culture of what Stockton is kind of known for, which is scary when you know what Sons of Anarchy is about. But I just, just love the show. I fell in love with the characters and oh my gosh, it has a special place in my heart, but it's also a very emotional watch for me. If you know, you know. I'm rewatching it right now. I'm introducing my husband to it and I know it's going to be a very painful, painful time. Of course, I also do love Supernatural. Supernatural will probably always be up there as one of my top favorite shows. Those are probably some of the top ones off the top of my head that I can think of as my favorite shows. And then we are finally here to the last question. Athena's Biblioteca asks, what is a hobby you think would be fun to get into? I have always been supremely jealous of people who have creative talent, who can be creative, not only as their hobby, but as their job. I am not a creative person at all. Creativity is very, very difficult for me. It's also very stressful for me. It's like one of the reasons why I can't even color for relaxation unless it's like a color by number, because I need you to tell me what colors to put there. I can't be left to think about what colors to put on that page. It's the reason why my Slayer Fest readathon doesn't have any cool graphics or a logo. It's just because I can't picture that and I don't know how to make it if I could picture it. I just think it's interesting the way that my brain works, how creativity is hard for me. So I think it's very, very impressive when people have creative hobbies that they do for fun, but they also can monetize. And I think one of those would be fun. Like recently I tried to start learning modern calligraphy and that's something that I would still like to continue or, um, you know, people who create soaps and candles and bath products and things like that. One hobby that I would personally love to do myself, especially because I think it would help in a future career, especially if I start working in a career that helps animals would be scuba diving. I would love to be a scuba certified person. I love the water. I would love to get in there. I would love to be able to do that. So that's probably a top one as well. All right, y'all, that is it. This video certainly ran a lot longer than I thought, but of course I could not stop talking. So I hope that you all enjoyed. Now it is time to go ahead and pick the winner of the giveaways. I'm pulling up the random comment picker here. I'm going to put in the link to that video. So we're going to start. Firecats! Firecats, you are the winner. And again, her comment was, congrats on the 1K. Besides Buffy, what other shows do you love? So congrats, Firecats. I know that you are on Goodreads and you are part of the Slayer Fest group. So I'm actually going to go ahead and privately message you on there because I think it would be a little bit easier. And we'll go ahead and get you set up with that $25 gift card. All right, everyone, that is all that I have for this video. Again, thank you so much for all of your questions. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that I answered them satisfactorily. Also, again, thank you so much much for 1000 subscribers. That means the world to me. I love this little community that we are creating here and I would love to just see it grow and blossom. And as always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I post two videos a week, sometimes three, if I have my shit together and a third video to film. And I would sure love to see you in one of those next videos. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.